Hello everyone, uh, it's my honor to be able to talk to you about uh, CT coronary angiogram and uh, this is a typical scene from uh, my clinic and uh, chest pain is actually one of the most common reasons why people uh, come to consult us and uh, you should not ignore chest pain because it can point to an underlying serious uh, condition. Now there are many causes of chest pain ranging from chest wall muscle problems to uh, breast uh, diseases uh, to the stomach and, and the lungs. However, uh, I think most people are concerned about coronary artery disease or heart artery disease uh, causing the chest pain. And uh, as you know, heart artery disease uh, results in narrowing and blockage of the arteries and uh, impeding blood flow to the heart. And I think most people also know that coronary artery disease can lead to serious consequences such as a heart attack. Uh, so uh, as you know, uh, coronary artery disease is a leading cause of uh, poor health as well as death. So now, the coronary arteries or the heart arteries actually run on the surface of the heart. Uh, they originate from this big artery called the aorta that supplies blood to the rest of the body. Uh, so the artery, uh, the coronary arteries actually supply blood to the heart muscles, very important function. There are three major coronary arteries. On the right side, you have the right coronary artery. On the left side, there is this left, a large artery called the left main artery that originates from the aorta and then divides into two branches, the left anterior descending artery that runs down the front of the heart and then the left circumflex artery that hooks around uh, the left side of the heart. Now, more, the major cause of heart artery disease is due to this process of atherosclerosis, which is actually seen as a degenerative process of the heart artery. Now, if, when we were babies, if you, you know, cut the coronary artery in the cross section, uh, you, get, you see this kind of uh, very nice and smooth uh, artery uh, wall. Uh, the artery is actually formed majorly of uh, smooth muscle cells. And of course, inside the artery is the lumen of the artery where the blood flows. Now, by the time we are teenagers or early 20s, uh, fats and cholesterol starts to get deposited in the wall of the artery. So this is an early atherosclerotic plaque, also known as a fatty streak. Now, due to various uh, risk factors such as diabetes, smoking, uh, hypertension, uh, stress, and so on, this cholesterol plaque can build up over time and eventually make the lumen become narrowed and even blocked. So uh, this is the process of the atherosclerosis uh, um, uh, transformation. Now, for the majority of people, the plaque gets calcified, which means that calcium deposits in this plaque and makes the plaque become hardened. However, in some unfortunate people, the plaque can rupture and the plaque material then enters into the bloodstream and cause a blood clot to form. When this blood clot forms, it will block up the artery uh, instantaneously and that gives rise to a heart attack. So when you see a doctor with chest pain, the doctor needs three important sets of information. Uh, the, the doctor needs to know whether your symptoms and signs are due to heart disease. The doctor needs to know the state of the blood flow to your heart muscles, as well as the state of your coronary arteries. And this helps the doctor to make the correct diagnosis and to determine the treatment and how urgent the treatment needs to be delivered. Now, so when you go and see a doctor with chest pain, the doctor will ask you a lot more details about the chest pain. And this is important because the doctor can then make a diagnosis whether that symptoms are due to underlying heart condition. Now, some of you may have undergone a stress test like this, uh, fem uh, this lady reporter from America. A stress test is basically a, a test designed to uh, look at the state of the blood flow to the heart muscles. But of course, we also need to look at the state of the heart arteries and we do this by, you, by uh, performing a procedure called a coronary angiogram. The word angiogram means picture of a blood vessel. So how do we perform coronary angiogram? There are two general ways. One way is to insert a tube into the heart, into the coronary arteries, and then we inject a dye or also called a contrast medium into the arteries and then we do x-rays and that will show us the arteries and whether there's any blockage or narrowing. 
But that, of course, is an invasive procedure and it does carry a small risk of complications such as bleeding. Another way is to do what we call a non-invasive coronary angiogram. And we, we can do this using MRI scanners or a CT scanner. So, of course, I'm going to talk to you about CT coronary angiogram. So, what do we require to perform a CT coronary angiogram? Of course, we need the scanner. The CT scanner basically is a, uh, essentially an a X-ray tube that sends X-rays uh, through the body of the patient. The patient is lying in the center of the scanner. And these X-rays are then detected by an array of detectors uh, opposite the X-ray tube. So when the body passes through the X-ray gantry, the tube goes round and round and round uh, from, you know, the, you know to, to take pictures of the region of interest. In our case, of course, the heart. Right? Uh, so uh, this will then be processed by the computers uh, to give you the images that we required. Now, for CT coronary angiogram, we also need to inject a dye or contrast medium. And this dye is what we call radio opaque. It blocks the X-rays and therefore highlighting those structures uh, in which the contrast flows. Now, uh, of course, we also need a patient. We will need a radiographer to operate the machine. We need a nurse to monitor the patient. We will need powerful computers to post-process the images, uh, the data to give us the images. Uh, and then we will need a radiologist to interpret the images. And finally, your cardiologist will then take those images and the report and uh, you know, decide what to do for you. All right? So this is a uh, typical image from a CT scan. And you can see that this is the heart in the middle of the chest. And uh, the dye has entered into the heart chambers and the aorta. So you see the white areas in the middle. That is the heart chamber where the, the dye or the contrast medium has entered. Now, so this dye blocks the x-rays and uh, so the computer will post-process it and turn the picture white. If the x-rays passes through the, the, the body easily, such as through the lungs, the picture is black. Okay, so you can see the lungs are black here. All right, so now the good thing about modern scanners is that uh, the, the scanners acquire a three-dimensional volume of uh, data and this can be reconstructed into a picture that looks like this and this allows us to look at the heart and the coronary arteries from various directions and angles so that we can detect all the uh, atherosclerotic plaques and assess the narrowing and the blockages all right so now it is important to know that there are four important sets of information that we can obtain from the ct coronary angiogram and i'll go through these four sets uh, with you so the first thing that we do when we put the patient in the scanner is that we take a plain CT scan first without injection of the dye. So uh, in this plain CT scan, some of the tissues such as the uh, coronary arteries will block some part of the x-ray and therefore uh, the coronary arteries, which is uh, arrowed here in green, will appear as grey. Right? And these are uh, pictures of a patient with normal coronary arteries. Right? Now, if the coronary arteries have calcified plaques, then you will see this because the calcium will block the x-rays and then the computer will then display the calcium as white. All right? So this is a patient with a lot of calcified plaques. And this is important information because the amount of calcium is a direct indicator of how much atherosclerosis has occurred and the, extents, the extent of uh, atherosclerotic plaques in the coronary arteries. So the computer can then calculate a score this is called the coronary calcium score. And this score is very useful for us to help us to predict future risk of heart attack and uh, death from heart disease. So there have been multiple research and studies that have been conducted over the last 30 years or so. And this is one uh, example of a study. And you can see from this graph that the more coronary calcium, the higher the calcium score, the higher the risk of future heart attack and death from heart disease. Now, on the contrary, if your calcium score is zero, the risk of heart disease is very low, okay? Exceedingly low, less than 1% over the next five to 10 years, all right? So now when the dye is injected and the, the contrast of the dye enters into the coronary arteries, then, you know, the lumen of the arteries will show up as white as seen here. Uh, these are pictures from a patient with normal coronary arteries and you can see that the wall of the artery is very smooth and there is, there's no uh, narrowing or obstruction of the coronary arteries. Now, 
As opposed to this particular patient, you can see that there is a little narrowing there in the middle of that artery. This is the left anterior descending artery. This is caused by an atherosclerotic plug. All right. So visually, you can take a look at this picture and you can say that you know the narrowing in that segment looks to be about 50%. All right. So narrowing in medical terms is known as stenosis. So we would call this moderate stenosis. Now, of course, we, uh, we don't really uh, always rely on our eyeball to estimate the degree of stenosis. Uh, we have computer softwares that can allow us to uh, estimate or calculate uh, the uh, amount of stenosis. So in this particular patient, the computer gave us a value of 52%. So that is actually quite close to our visual estimation, right? So now these are examples of patients with more severe stenosis. You can see how narrow now that segment of the artery is. And uh, another picture here of a patient with very severe uh, stenosis. And we can also view the stenosis from uh, outside the heart. This is what we call a three-dimensional volume rendered image of the heart. You can see that very thin area where blood is just uh, trickling through. All right. Another patient with severe stenosis here, the artery is almost occluded, and this patient had chest pain. So he was sent to our cardiac catheterization lab, and he underwent coronary invasive coronary angiogram. And now you can see where the artery is blocked. That corresponds to what we see on the CT coronary angiogram. So this patient, of course, underwent ballooning and stenting, and now you can see the blood flowing down the artery when the artery is open up. All right. So this is where CT coronary angiogram is very helpful to non-invasively help us to diagnose the presence and the severity of coronary artery disease, all right? Okay, we can also use CT coronary angiogram to assess stents. Uh, this is an example of a metallic stent. Uh, the metal in the stent will appear as white, okay, on the CT picture. This is an example of a previously implanted stent. We used to implant this, uh, what we call a bioabsorbable stent. The stent material will get uh, dissolved over time, and that leaves behind two little, what we call platinum markers to indicate the location of the previous stent. All right? In this case, the artery is open, all right? it's patent. Now, we can also use CT coronogram to evaluate patients after bypass surgery. So in coronary artery bypass, what the surgeon does is to take the veins from the legs uh, or some arteries and uh, connect to the aorta and connect to the distal part of the coronary arteries to bypass the blocked or the narrow segments. All right? So here you can see this patient with three uh, patent coronary artery bypass grafts. All right? One on the right side, one coming down from the chest uh, and connected to the left anterior descending artery, and another uh, vein graft that connects to a branch of the left circumflex artery. So in this particular patient, all the grafts are patent. Now this patient, unfortunately, is supposed to also have three grafts, but unfortunately, the graft on the right side is blocked. So when it's blocked, there's no contrast flowing through, and uh, therefore, the graph does not show up on the CT scan. And that leaves behind a little stump on the aorta as indicated by the red arrow. And that stump indicates where the graph was supposed to be. The other two graphs in this patient are patent, right? Okay, now besides atherosclerosis, there are some other abnormalities of the coronary arteries that the CT scan can pick up. Uh, so some patients are born with coronary arteries that originate from the wrong place, all right? So in this particular patient here, the right coronary artery comes out from the left side when it should be coming out from the right side, okay? So some of these patients do get into trouble in terms of chest pain uh, as well as heart attack, particularly when they do strenuous exercise, all right? Um, here is a patient with an abnormal dilatation or enlargement of the artery, and this is called a coronary artery aneurysm. All right? And these aneurysms can also give rise to heart attack and chest pain because sometimes blood can clot within the aneurysm. So besides looking at the coronary arteries, the CT scan can also tell us about other heart abnormalities. For instance, this particular patient has a very large hole in the heart. And you can see where the arrow is pointing, that hole there. And now, contrast and blood is flowing from the left heart chamber into the right heart chamber. That's not supposed to happen. All right? So this is a hole in the heart. Another example here is a patient with a metallic valve. As you can see, that uh, bright uh, starburst pattern, that's the metallic valve. And then there is a black 
object in the heart chamber. That's a blood clot. This is a very dangerous situation because the blood clot can then block up the, the heart valve and then the patient can experience sudden cardiac death. All right? Okay, so besides looking at the heart and the coronary arteries, the CT scan will also pick up certain abnormalities outside the heart because we can see the chest, we can see the lungs, the liver, and so on. And here is an example of a patient who incidentally picked up, the CT scan picked up a little nodule in the lung. This could very well be an early lung cancer. So this patient will definitely needs to be followed up closely. All right? Another example here is a patient, a lady, with part of the stomach in the chest, all right? This is called a hiatal hernia. This is called a hiatal hernia, and the stomach is not supposed to be in the chest, it's supposed to be in the abdomen. So when the, when the stomach is, you know, uh, in the chest, it can cause uh, chest pain and indigestion and so on, all right? So who is elig el eligible for CT choreangiogram? Uh, we can use CT choreangiogram to evaluate people with chest pain or shortness of breath suspected to be due to coronary artery disease, huh? but not when the patient is suffering from a heart attack. Okay? We also use CT scans to evaluate people with suspected coronary artery anomalies as well as people with equivocal stress test results, basically to find out whether there's underlying coronary artery disease. However, CT scan does have some limitations. Uh, principally, of course, there's radiation exposure because of the X-rays, and uh, the contrast of the dye is not suitable for people with moderate to severe kidney disease because the dye can actually damage the kidneys. All right? It is also not suitable for people with fast and irregular heartbeat as well as people who can't hold their breath because then you get motion artifacts and then the pictures become blur. Okay? Just like when you take a picture and somebody is moving. So we are looking forward to some future developments of the coronary, CT coronary angiogram. Uh, in the future, hopefully we can get all these images with less radiation at higher resolution so we can see all the smaller branches as well as faster scan so that we can scan with just a single heartbeat. All right? And then of course, in the future, we can have this ability to measure blood flow in the coronary artery as well so that we don't have to do the stress test anymore. So ladies and gentlemen, um, in conclusion, CT coronary angiogram is a very useful non-invasive test to help us to determine the cause of chest pain and it is able to help us to risk stratify people for, few, for, uh, for treatment as well as uh, to accurately determine the severity of underlying coronary artery disease. And finally, it can also provide information about other heart and non-heart conditions. Thank you very much.